Hello everybody, welcome back to Middle-earth. This is Count MRVHS with our next episode of our Chiefdom of Rune campaign for the Fourth Age Total War Dominion of Men. The situation now is that uh, we are uh, currently at peace with North Rune and with Dorwinian. We have some uh, advancement in the area of North Rune. We have a, uh, a sort of hodgepodge army of mostly Cav in the region, and we are building Homeland Dominion in our newest settlement, Thordram. In the west, uh, in Mordor, North, uh, sorry, the Reunited Kingdom has been making great gains. It has been really pushing out Adunabar, and I'm expecting that we're going to see them pushing even further, probably taking uh, these other Nurn settlements if we don't do something about it. So to that end, we are assembling an army here under our faction leader. We're going to grab this rebel set settlement uh, in a little while is the plan. And that'll give us a bit of a presence in eastern Mordor and hopefully help uh, defend our homelands a bit. So we'll just pass the turn here. Okay, interesting. Rune, uh, sorry, Rohan wants trade. We can't trade with him yet. I am curious about their map info, but no, they, they don't even want to try to uh, counter-offer that. Alright, Lug has finished Fiefdom Dominion. You can see that our profits are ticking up. So, we do have a bit of work here before Lug becomes a really useful settlement. Uh, we do not have a governor there, unfortunately, so this is a lot more expensive than it would be otherwise. And we don't have any candidates, really, to govern Lug, so I think either we're going to have to bite the bullet, or we'll just wait. Uh, and I'm thinking about the latter right now. I, I think I want to pour development into a Karn. This is uh, bigger, better developed already. It does have a governor. So we'll spend our money here rather than in Lug, at least for now. We've also uh, thinned out our forces in the south a bit. We've got just one army here, uh, Ulwar the Hunter. Uh, this is our, our commander here. He's dubious with regard to the faction leader. And we have seen Brada tick upward. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think. Nine authority. That's great. So that means the governors are uh, a bit more willing to send those tax profits home and to get cracking on the building projects. Uh, the generals are going to be a bit better in terms of leading their men and encouraging them. So this is all good stuff. 4485. So I do want to spend something now. Probably Rakos. Let's see. So what's this trader going to get me? Uh, again, not a lot. It's not going to be much until I get a harbor uh, in both of these settlements and start doing trade. But here's another thing that I have uh, just thought of. This settlement here, or this island rather, does have a settlement. Uh, it is held by the uh, the independent peoples at first. And it doesn't look like uh, anybody has taken it. Uh, we are technically at war here because these are uh, independent. So we could put together an army and take the settlement here. And that would be a nice little bit of trade income. I'm also noticing that we are trading with Dorwinian here along this... Uh, this sea route. So even though we don't have the port, that is giving us a bit of income. Um, 868. That's another 500, basically. It's going to cost us about 80. So it's, it's going to do maybe 400 or so in terms of overall profit. 6,000. Well... What do we have here for resources? Horses, 
Uh, it looks like wild animals and livestock. You know, I think I'm going to go with a market. Uh, that's not, not great. Okay, we'll go with this. Uh, when in doubt, make the cheap uh, small thing here. And I think in Fennis Rim, we're also going to go with a financial policy. Uh, this again is a trading settlement, and we want to work that up. Still got over 3,000, so Erebost. Uh, let's see. I think we're going to want mustering fields here. That is going to cost a bit, but let's do it. Uh, this will allow us to train archers, uh, as well as axemen and some cav uh, right on the border with Ravanian, which I think is going to be pretty helpful. So I don't think this emissary really needs to hang around. I'd rather uh, have him just check out Ravanian, as they are still besieging this stronghold of Kirith Gorgor. Let's send this guy down here because I believe Ravanian has actually taken Lithmore Chant. All right, no signs of unrest. This is a uh, pretty much a homeland uh, for that faction. Any other settlements over here? No, but you can see a Dunabar is moving west to try to counter the Reunited Kingdom's advance. Well, let's get some more skirmishers. And we'll send them over too. Alright. So Adele is here. Um, largely to keep an eye on Far Harad, who are building up uh, a pretty sizable garrison here. But also Khand, we drew off the siege uh, and just let them sit for a little while. Yes. Periodically we'll check in with them. They're probably not going to be too open for quite some time. But if we, uh, if we back off for a while, maybe they'll come around to a ceasefire. But honestly, at this point, I'm happy with just a cold war with them. So was Dorwinian trying to bribe my emissary? Okay. So North Rune is posturing. They have a, an army right on the border here. I don't see any other forces nearby. Grab those slingers, as always. And we're just going to move up uh, to sort of mirror what they're doing. It's important that I keep these forces up here while Thordram is still unwalled. But only one more turn till Homeland Dominion is finished. Uh, so 38... So, in Raycost, I could go for tanneries and woolmakers. I could go for horse breeders. Uh, they're both going to give me the same amount of income initially. I think I'm going to go with horses here. Um, I believe the second tier of horse breeders is going to bring in more income than the tanneries and woolmakers. Uh, the... the counter benefit is that the tanneries and wool makers will allow you to increase the armor of your troops at level 2. Uh, I don't imagine we're going to do a lot of training out of Raycoast. It's a financial settlement so uh, so we'll probably go with the horse breeders. How much are we losing though? Because this does cost some upkeep. So just 20. So it'll give us another 30 or so. But it might, might be better to go with this. This is going to save us... Uh, so 
almost 200. This is going to actually be better. Uh, it, it'll at least cover its costs better, and it's going to be a little cheaper to make in the short run. Okay, so 1,400. Anything else financially? I guess not, but... Let's see, what do we need in this army? Well, I'd be happy with a couple more uh, warband. Get some decent-ish infantry. this. Amran Magor. If I remember correctly, it's mostly low-tier Axemen, so I don't expect a very difficult fight, but, you know, we'll send those other skirmishers. Muldin does not really need them. 160. Um, I think we'll go ahead also and train this. That way we can bring this warband unit up for retraining. And that'll be the turn. got there before me. Well, good for them. <laughs> Alright, but we finished Homeland in Thordram. So, 5,000 a turn now. This is looking much better. I do want to send up my Warband together. Don't want to trespass on Dorwinian if I don't have to. I believe this is the army that was standing on the border. So they moved away. I'll move away also. So this may look a little confusing. Um, we've got local levies, we've got native recruitment, and we've got cultic recruitment. Local levies are always going to be uh, available. As it says here, uh, these are from the local pop uh, population beyond your faction's homelands. So we're always going to get these two units. It's a question of do we have native recruitment or do we have cultic? In this case, we are native. Now again, these are both identical right now, but at higher tiers... Uh, you'd start to see some differences. So, a mustering fields would give us uh, watchmen, horse archers, and warband and skirmishers. Um, we will need this for higher levels, if you see. This gets us up to axemen, raiders, and tier 4 is going to get us up here. As well as, it's going to allow uh, this very important tributary camps. It requires a warlord's barracks, which is the tier 4. So we're going to need to go all the way up this chain to get this. Tributary camps will allow us to train the Cond specific units. So I'm tempted to do this right now just so we can have some kind of respectable uh, recruitment here. We can get horse archers at will. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this is uh, not too great. I was hoping to get this for myself, but you know what? Uh, if a Dunabar gets it, I guess that's okay. Maybe what I ought to do is see about getting military access with a Dunabar 
Um, I'm not too worried about them anymore. As, as we've seen, the Reunited Kingdom has really uh, done a lot of damage. So what I'd like to do is keep them around as an ally. They've been a good ally because they've been uh, basically weak enough to not be a threat, but they've been strong enough to, I guess, act as somewhat of a speed bump against uh, these other factions. So maybe military access would be good, and then I could sort of help them out a little bit without uh, making them too mad. I could sort of march over their territory, attack the Reunited Kingdom's settlements, smash them down, get some cash, and get out of there. Might be a fun thing to do. Right, we probably had some emissaries to move around. Looks like Rovanian's having a tough time getting in here, and they've got some orc units. Orc champions are uh, probably the best you can do as a Dunabar in terms of the lower level orcs without getting into Uruks. So those are pretty good. Good for them. I do want to keep an eye on my frontier. I don't think that Ravanian is too eager to fight. They don't appear to be. But just in case. Alright, so we've got to build here. Control posts might be good. Trade will get me a little bit of population. Yeah, let's go with trade. Again, what we're waiting for is to see some more action over here. Uh, if Dorwinian really threatens Fornhood, I want to uh, go in and, and start hitting them, even though we are allied. seeing anything too troubling over here. So let's pass the turn. Ho! Oh. Man, see, this is... This is troubling. But, what we just saw was North Rune take this, but there's a lot of unrest. So that is very interesting. Ah, so we had this settlement on auto-manage, and what that means is because we built this uh, tier of mustering fields where we can train archers, I had an archer unit that was a little below strength, and that auto-trained. So, that happened. And we've got this guy. Oh, shoot, I forgot to take him out. So he's the governor now. And he's not very good. Well, let's see. Is it better to keep him in? 284. Actually, it is. 
He's actually making us cash. Uh, let's see, 2280 to do control posts with him in versus 3,000 with him out. So he's actually doing a good job. All right. We'll go ahead and let him auto-manage. He's supportive already. That will uh, help things even more. Very good. Well, this is really interesting. So let's meet these guys up. At this point, I can take the Axemen out of here. Public order is not so bad. Uh, that gives us a little bit more of an infantry line. Okay. So 55. God, there's so much to, uh, to do. Could go with a market here. Let's do that. And they're building up. Oh, jeez. Full stack. Ah, they got some militia. Probably from this settlement right here. Okay. They took Amron Magor. It looks like they're not going to lose it to Rebellion. Unless they move the army out. So I'll have to keep eyes on that. But let's see. If we can do... Uh, just swap military access. They may not want to do this. No. So there is a more reliable way to get that. So we'll try that in a future turn. Once the AI rejects an offer, they're going to reject everything after uh, that, that you try in the same turn. Okay, and here we've got Khand getting ready for more action. So I'll retrain these guys. Pick up a fourth. I'll have to watch that stack. So, probably this way. Yep. Looks like heavy on cav. So, Far Harad is, is just training here. They're not interested in Alagos yet, which is good. Um, they may be building up to try yet again at Karasagar. So I think we need to worry more about uh, Khand. So we're making 51.07. Alright. Still got a big army here. almost done. Uh, I'll, I'm close to being able to get trained spies. What I need is this, the Great Market Scouts. So, I can build that. Um, once this market is finished, I, I think I might just go for that. Alright. 
Oh, and they managed to deal with the unrest in Ayar Helkar. So, we may have to start up our war with North Rune again. If they look like they're getting the upper hand here, uh, we'll swoop in to the west. Cost me a hundred in corruption. Cost me a, almost a hundred in losing the land tax. But it's going to make 500, so it's going to be a net of 300. And allow me to train boats, which I will need if I'm going to take this. So I think I'm going to do that. Starting to get a little worried about Rovanian, so maybe I'll bring my faction leader up. We do have a couple of slingers. Let's pick those guys. Checking to see if this is under siege. Okay. Well, I think this is all that North Rune has, these three. If I go straight for Foreign Hood, which I could take, I'm quite sure, uh, that would cut them in half. That would leave them with two small, unwalled, poorly developed settlements. That would really uh, hurt them. It would also have the advantage of leaving them with a border with Dorwinian. So probably I could avoid starting problems with Dorwinian uh, because they would still be busy uh, with North Rune. So that may be the thing to do. Alright, so fish. It's going to increase trade a bit. But at higher levels, what it does is increases growth. You can see that we've basically stalled. Taxes are as low as they can be. So, uh, tier two of this uh, comes with a population growth bonus. So, you know, I, I don't feel like I need it right now, but that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, this would get me a little bit... Actually, let's do this to counter some of the, uh, the upkeep costs we've been incurring with these military uh, buildings. So Erebos, is this going to be military or financial? Well, it does have a port, so I'm tempted to go finances uh, with this also. We've got training that we can do from Tham. So we'll do that. All right, they're just hanging out on the border, which is fine with me. See if they're interested in anything. No. Yeah. All right, guys. I think we'll call the episode here. No action just yet. A lot of building up and a lot of plans for next time. So that episode will be forthcoming soon. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.